Welcome back friends. Uh, in this video tutorial we'll be talking about the chromosomal abnormalities and this PPT is present, actually made by Dr. Samina Anjum and I'm just sharing uh, her PPT so uh, all credit goes to the actual content developer so I'm sharing it for the educational purpose copyrighted goes to the original developer. I'm Shuman Bhattacharji and I'm the presenter of this PowerPoint. So let's begin. So we'll be looking at different chromosomal abnormalities that are present but actually we won't be talking about the syndromes that we usually know. We are having a separate video on those syndromes. If you want to see, you can notice that uh, in uh, my other video about the chromosomal, uh, actually about the genetic uh, syndromes and disorders. This is about the different chromosomal defects that give rise to different, uh, different kind of clinical conditions. So first is the cause of, normally, normally all these causes of birth defects and spontaneous abortions that we usually see in US and also in other, other part of, of the world are due to two reasons majorly. One is for chromosomal abnormalities, uh, for example the deletion or addition of the chromosomes and chromosomal parts, swapping of the chromosomal parts and so on, and the genetic factors. And if we look at here the in incidence for major chromosomal abnormalities, what we know is that 50% of the conceptions are uh, in the spontaneous abortions and 50% of the abor abortions are from the major chromosomal abnormalities. That's why the statistics is showing us that it's a huge uh, role of these chromosomal abnormalities for the spontaneous abortion. So approximately 25% of the uh, conceptuous uh, have major chromosomal defects. So let's begin. Now, normally, how can we know whether uh, the chromosome set, whatever is present in human body, is fine, is okay? To see, the only way to look at it is to produce a karyotype. Now, karyotype is uh, actually the graph, or or it's actually the picture of all the chromosome that is present in our cell. So actually, we produce it into a glass of slide. We add different fluorescent tag to visualize that each and every chromosomes are correct or not. The length are correct or not. There is there any kind of du duplication, deletion, or change in shape and size or not. So if everything is okay, we can say it's a normal karyotyping. As you can see here in this picture, this is a karyotyping of a normal individual having 23 pairs of chromosomes. Among them, uh, 22 pairs of autosomes or normal somatic cell chromosomes and one pair is the sex chromosome controlling the sex characteristics of our body. So if you look at here, each of these different chromosomes are tagged with different colorations so that we can actually visualize that. So you can see if, if there is any deletion at the chromosome number 4, there will be a shortening of the arm or chromosome number 5, there will be shortening of the arm. As you can look at it, we can say whether it is okay or not. Or for example, in other diseases like trisomy 21, if there is another chromosome we can see, another dot we can see uh, among this 21st len, we can find that yes, there is kind of difficulty. So actually by looking at karyotyping, we can tell certain types of chromosomal defects. In fact, most of the types of chromosomal defects, but uh, other kinds of defects are also there for which uh, to detect, uh, we need to use some more sophisticated techniques. Okay. So we actually do this genotyping or karyotype production and uh, for that in the future purposes we will use the word ploidy. Now ploidy means it's the number of sets of chromosome that is present in the biological cell. For example if we talk about uh, haploid that is a num small n, it's denoted by small n, it is, a, uh, it is the number of chromosome that is present, the number of set is present in our gametes or in case of uh, male it's sperm, in case of female it's ovum or the egg. So in both these cases the n number of chromosomes are present. On the other hand diploid means the double of the n, so 2n is the normal somatic cell uh, is having the number of 2n number of chromosomes. On the other hand if you look at euploid it is an exact or multiple of the n or of the monoploid number. So if you look at polyploid, if you look at the ploids, you know the set, number of set of the chromosome, but euploid is the exact multiple of the n number of chromosomes. So either it's a 1n or 2n or 3n or 4n, for example n is a haploid, 2n is diploid, 3n is triploid, 4n is tetraploid, 5n is pentaploid and so on. So you can see these different ploids or euploid groups multiplied in, with n, which is the haploid. Now, the first kind of disorders that we are going to see is called the polyploid. Now, polyploid is certain things where there is uh, the increment of the chromosome numbers in set. So, okay, okay, so if you look at here in the chromosome number that is multiple of haploid number. So, if you look at here, uh, I, I, many, many organisms have more than two sets of the homologous chromosome. So, usually each of the sets, so this red, this 
uh, purple, this yellow, each of them are the set of chromosomes. So there should be two chromosomes in each set. One is from father, one is from the mother. But if there is a change in the number of the chromosome in set, for example, instead of two in a set, we are having three in a set. This is called polyploid. If the number of chromosomes increase by the set, it is called the polyploid. On the other hand, so you can look at it, three means triploid. If we are having four instead of two, you'll call it a tetraploid. If we have five, we'll be calling it as a pentaploid and so on. On the other hand, we are having another term that is called aneuploid. Now, aneuploid is the abnormal number of chromosomes having a single extra chromosome or sometimes a deletion of one extra chromosome. So, either addition of a single chromosome or missing of a single chromosome. For example, here we can see in this whole karyotyping, number 13 should have two set, but instead of it is having two set, it is having another one chromosome extra. So, this is termed as the, so, so the ultimately the number of chromosomes and overall number of chromosomes for this individual become 47 instead of 46, right? On the other hand, it could be one deleted. It will be uh, 45 instead of uh, 46. That's in both these cases, they are called aneuploid. That means the deletion or addition of single number of chromosomes. On the other hand, uh, for polyploid, there will be increment of number of sets, right? So usually it occurs in humans, although it occurs in some tissues, in certain tissues, especially in the liver cells, you can see these polyploids to occur. Now normally what we know, actually this, this whole process of aneuploidy, which is a number uh, addition or deletion by one, or polyploidy, the change in number in set of the chromosomes, they occur due to uh, the segregation or the mis missegregation of the chromosome. During the segregation process, it segrega if the segregation doesn't occur properly, it gives us this kind of problems. Now actually, the chromosomal abnormalities that we see majorly of two different types. One is numerical, another one is structural. Now majorly, whatever we are talking about as aneuploid, euploid or polyploids, all these things are the abnormalities using numericals. So change in the number of chromosomes, either in the set or in the number of individual chromosomes, but everything is occurring in the number of the chromosomes. But on the other hand, we are having a structural abnormality where the set or where, where the chromosome can have deletion, they can have duplication, translocation, and so on. So if we look at here the numerical chromosomal abnormalities like polyploids or aneuploids, they usually occur due to meiotic non-disjunction or mitotic non-disjunction. Now non-disjunction means failure in the segregation of the chromatids during uh, the anaphase during the segregation process, if there is any failure, one side reaches more, one side receives more number of chromosome, one side receives less number of chromosome. That thing is termed as meiotic or mitotic non-disjunction. Now mitotic non-disjunction can occur only in the anaphase, but meiotic non-disjunction can occur both meiotic 1 as well as meiotic 2 phases. Or except for that, we can have translocation, uh, that can be another cause. Now here you can see in the meiotic non-disjunction, we are having meiosis 1, where two members of homologous chromosomes fail to separate. And in meiosis 2, two sister chromatids fail to separate. Because you know, in meiosis, the, the chance of misconception or wrong segregation is more, because there are two stages of separation. In meiosis 1, the whole pair of chromosomes are separated. In meiosis 2, only one chromosome is getting separated. I mean only uh, one chromosome and sister chromatids of those chromosomes are getting separated. So if you look at here, in meiosis 1, there can be a chance of segregation problem. In meiosis 2, there is also a chance of segregational problem. So here are the problems. So if you look at here, number of chromosomes, non-disjunction in meiosis 1, it happens that during the whole set of segregation, there is any problem. Due to this segregation problem, as you can see, one side, this left side receives this 2 instead of 1. So ultimately they will receive 3 sets, but on the other hand this receives only 1 set. right? So ultimately what it produces, it produces this right hand side gametes will be n minus 1 chromosome, but this left hand side gametes will be n plus, chromosome, plus 1 chromosome because it, they receives 1 set extra. So this is the increment in the left hand side, decrement in the right hand side. So what happens in normal meiosis, you can see the segregation occurs properly, each and everybody receives the same type, like small n, small n and all, everything goes fine. But what happens in the non-disjunction in meiosis 2, now suppose normal meiosis 1 occurs, set segregation is fine, but after that, during the meiosis 2, 
the problem occurs and what it does actually in the final time it is it produces 1 in plus 1 among 4 1 in minus 1 among 4, four among, and 2 n number of chromosome containing chromosome among 4 but on the other hand if there is any problem in the non disjunction in meiosis 1 there won't be any normal gamete which contains n number of chromosome so if the problem occurs in the first meiotic division there won't be any normal gamete containing n number of chromosome but if there is a problem occurs in only in the non in meiosis 2 but fine in meiosis 1 there will be two n number of chromosome containing cells present and here what we can see that uh, we are having two cells like X cells and normal cell but if, if, if we take this any kind of abnormal chromosome number containing cell for example the n plus one number of chromosome containing cell as an egg and suppose sperm is a normal one so if they fuse they produce a zygote will have 2n plus one chromosome which is an aneuploid condition one extra chromosome will be there and that if, if, if it is uh, fertilized uh, after the fertilization once it is throughout the evolution throughout the embryonic development it produces the embryo the child will have one uh, chromosome extra it can give a trisomy like situation now if we look at the chromosomal disorders in the non-numerical that is the structural disorders there can be chromosomal deletion chromosomal inversion chromosomal translocation if we look at here the single chromosome disorders can be of deletion so some part of the chromosome can be deleted so it becomes shorter sometimes the part will be duplicated that means a single part will be duplicated and they are added with the previous one so the chromosome length is slightly elongated now or sometimes what we can see they are getting inverted so suppose this is the scenario and this part is getting cleaved out and 180 degree rotation and it is attached to the same chromosome so this is not two different chromosomes all over we have seen of a same single chromosome and this thing is called inversion this is simply the gene flip so gene is getting flipped there so due to these three different problems can be seen along with a single chromosome now however if we involve another chromosome with it there will be two more varieties one is insertion one is translocation in the insertion what happens one segment of a gene uh, from a chromosome can be inserted to another chromosome which is nearby and we get different length of the chromosome now on the other hand the translocation can be uh, so simple segment of the chromosome can be swapped between the different chromosomes so the six segment of this blue chromosome is swapped with the green one and the green one is swapped with the blue one so this can also change the the structure and the gene alignment of the chromosomes that are present so that's how we get different varieties of uh, chromosomal defects like that now if we look at here the translocation can be of two different type actually balanced and imbalanced now if you look at the balanced translocation the balanced translocation is the translocation where after the translocation the length of both the chromosomes becomes kind of same so you can see here this chromosome this green one is pretty long this chromosome 20 which is uh, very short so if there is a translocation of a, a longer portion with the shorter portion of the chromosome 20 and the longer portion of chromosome 4 after the translocation what we can see that chromosome 4 receives very small part from 20 but 20 receives a longer part from chromosome 4 ultimately it is converting both the chromosomes of a similar length right so we call it the balanced translocation condition on the other hand there are certain scenarios where there is unbalanced translocation where we can see that the segments are transferred and not maintaining any length similarity between them one chromosome is still la longer than other chromosome so that is called the unbalanced translocation so ultimately these things are uh, are the different chromosomal abnormalities of uh, the structural abnormalities and i hope that's helpful guys thank you